This is Nick Barrett with a strike analysis video for a couple of minutes. I'm just going to show you, first of all, a clip with myself overlaid with the Darkfish software on top of a client of mine. And we've timed it so that the beginning of the backswing starts at the same time with both players. And let's see how the shot uh, pans out uh, during the backswing gear change at the back and strike. So both backswings happen in a controlled way. My client goes through very quickly. And this is very common in uh, players below 100 break standard where the delivery is very rushed. If you look at the guys on TV, uh, they start the delivery very gradually. The gear change at the back is a personal thing and uh, just because I'm longer than other players or they're quicker than somebody else doesn't mean that uh, that's the way to do it. Everyone has their own tempo so you need to find yours that supports a controlled delivery. But if you look, that's the end of the delivery. My, my delivery haven't, hasn't even begun yet. And this is uh, about four times slower than normal. So it is about 200 frames, eight times slower than normal. It is 200 frames a second. So we can get all the details in. This is with a slow motion camera, which is why the light is a bit dark. And this is from side on. We'll, after I show you this, I'll show you again the previous clip of Adjust Myself and you'll see where the slight changes in perfect level happen during the delivery uh, on the other video. But let's have a look at this. Backswing looks fairly flat. And then I'm going to pause it there. The reason why I've got a white tape around the queue uh, near the ferrule is that the software tracks a, um, a moving object, but it must have contrast with the background. That's why I made a, a, a contrasting white label near the ferrule. And this red tracking line that you see demonstrates exactly uh, the... Um, the path relative to horizontal that the queue has taken. So let's slow this down even further because I want to point out something on acceleration here. <clears throat> if you watch most of the pros on TV, you'll see that they do this, which is a gradual build-up of speed. You can see that if I draw horizontal lines, Here. And again. You'll see that the speed gradually builds up. The speed of the queue, the acceleration is gradually increasing as the queue moves forward, like a plane taking off. And as you can see there, it's a gradual acceleration. It's not a sudden. And that's the key to keeping the queue under control and on the line and not tensing your body. If you have sudden acceleration, you have to tense your body. That will move the cue off the line. If you put the tip against the cue wall, don't move it. Tense your arm and relax it. Tense and relax, tense and relax. Without moving the tip on the cue ball, you'll see that it actually does move. You'll see it moving a millimeter or two left and right when you do that. If you do that on the delivery, you'll pull the cue off the line of aim, and that'll miss a ball by two, three, four inches over the length of a table. So this is really slow now. It's probably about 30 times slower than uh, normal. And I just want to show the build-up of acceleration here. Just waiting for it to start. Hopefully we'll get there. Just look as the cue begins to move, we'll start counting and you'll see the extra distance on each number as I count forwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty. Now it's accelerating. And I just want to point out here that the tip is after impact on the ball, it's forced the cue slightly out of the bridge. On impact, that's partly why it's dropping. The other reason is that I, as a player, as an individual, uh, after the impact of the ball, my cue 
uh, touches the chin it's a feedback mechanism to know if the cue's gone through straight and then the lift up at the end that's where the hand hits the chest and you can see it's uh, lifting out of the bridge hand very slightly there and then it drops down and settles uh, on the parallel position so if we have a look at the at uh, normal slow motion speed this strike from the side again you'll see after impact on the cue ball the cue touches the chin, chin slightly and you'll see the slight distortion as the hand hits the chest as well so let's have a look again gradual build up of speed let's have a look at that again just a little bit slower This is about 30 times slower than normal. I'm just slowing it down in the Dartfish software, that's all. It's dropped down, it's touched the cute chin a little bit. Then it push it, the chest pushes the hand down slightly. Let's have another look. On impact, the cue just drops away from the chin very slightly. After impact, hits the chin again. Hand hits the chest, pushes down very slightly. There you go. But that finger is open. That first finger of the grip is open to allow the cue to move forward uh, easily. And then let's have a look at the normal speed slow-mo on the side on video. So there we have it, a couple of slow-mo videos. Hope that was interesting. Tune in next week for a few more videos.